I'm bored, so let's hack something. In this first episode, it's Temple Run 2 on Android. Let's go and hack it. First, let's take a look at Temple Run 2. This is a fairly simple sort of game which has become very popular. Now, let's go and hack it. First, let's try altering the game's save game file. All of the things in this video require your Android device to be rooted. First, we need a file manager which can access root files. In Android, the storage is separated into three different categories. Android storage, the internal SD card and the external SD card. To find the game's save file, we'll be looking in the internal SD card. The internal SD card is supposed to be secure storage except it isn't for rooted devices so once you've navigated your way to the internal SD card go to Android then data then find Temple Run's files all of the different apps are written in their full names it's easier to quickly do a search to find this then once you're in this go into files then go into the file where there's a list of different variables for the game now let's try and find the coins there's quite a lot here but if you look closely you can find the value for the number of coins now let's add some zeros on the end now let's save a file and go into Temple Run. And let's take a look at the number of coins. Oh no! There's zero! The game's resetted! It's known I tried to hack it! Well, how it did it is one of the values in the save game file was a checksum. This checksum is generated through a calculation of the different elements of the game. This checksum proves the different variables in the game have not been altered. This is so annoying, but there's several other methods of hacking this game. In my next method, I'll be using live RAM hacking, a very clever and powerful technique which enables you to alter values actually running in the RAM of a device. This enables you to do an awful lot of different hacks. The app for this is called Game Killer. Another app is Game CIH, but I think Game Killer works better. So once you've loaded up Game Killer, go back into Temple Run and start running the game. Now, just play the game normally until you've collected some coins. Once you've done this, pause the game. And then at the top left corner is the symbol to load Game Killer. Go onto this symbol and then enter in the number of coins you have. This will search your RAM, each different section of the RAM which contains this value. When you press search, it will ask you what sort of value you want to find. We are looking for a 32-bit integer. So we press D word, 4 billion. 4 billion because 32 bits can become just over 4 billion different values. This is the exact same reason that a 32-bit computer can only have 4 gigabytes of RAM. And now, carry on playing the game until you've collected some more coins. Once you've done this, press pause. Then enter in the value again. And then we'll see there's now only a few values. These are all the values that were the previous value and have now became the new value. Now we're going to press this symbol at the bottom, then go to data control and modify all values. This means as well as modifying the value of the coins, we're also going to be modifying five innocent values. Hopefully this won't crash the app. If it does, let's go through all the different steps of this video from scratch. Now we want to alter these values to the highest possible value. But what is that? Well, as it's a 32-bit value, obviously just over 4 billion. Except it's not, because this game uses two's a complement. Two's a complement is a way of, rather having a binary going from zero up to four billion, two's a complement enables you to also have negative values. It's like having an adding machine, then turning back the adding machine by one and watching all the values go to nine, 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 nine. except that's decimal. This is binary, so therefore we'll be using binary numbers rather than decimal numbers. This means if you have a value such as four billion, this will be about 200 million below zero, so it'll count it as minus 200 million. Half of a values are positive and half of the values are negative, which means the highest value I can set this to is just over 2 billion. Now we've altered this, carry on playing a game until you collect another coin, because the value will not update yet. Look at the number of coins! Yes! I've hacked it! Now we can go into the upgrade section and buy every single character just like that. 
And now, let's try altering the number of gems. As well as having coins, this game also has gems. This is very typical of a lot of Android games now. This is a way of basically them trying to make money. Often Android games have two or even three or four different currencies. And one of these currencies is the main currency. Then also sometimes they have an alternative currency, but not in this game. Then they have the other currency, which you have to pay for in real money. This really annoys me the way all these games try and make money nowadays. Anyway, we can also alter the number of gems, so we don't have to pay real money for them. Firstly, go back into Game Killer, clear everything, then enter in 4, because we've currently got 4 gems, and set it as another 32-bit value. Then after this, all you have to do is go and buy something. Now we've got three gems. Now enter in three into Game Killer. Then go and buy something again. And we can now see us is one value left. This must be the value of gems. Now let's go and alter this value. Now early on I was saying about the two's a complement system. Now I'm going to demonstrate to you how two's a complement works. So firstly I'm going to set this value, the number of gems, to 3 billion. Now this will come out of just under minus 1 billion in the two's a complement system. Because of the way the binary works, I've got 4 billion values from the 32 bits. All the values just over 2 billion become the negative values wrapping back from under 0. And we can see just under minus 1 billion gems. That's proof that this game uses the two's a complement system. So Temple Run has now been hacked, but that's not always something else to hack in Temple Run. The top score! The score is generated from how far you've managed to run. What about if I could run indefinitely? And I have found a way to do this. Simply go back into the game and play another game of Temple Run. Now, because of the number of coins I've got, it now comes up with an option to make it run so far at the start of the game. If I press this option, the character starts running. And he'll run for so many meters, then he'll carry on walking properly. That is at least a benefit of having so many coins. And we can now see after he's run so far, he's now slowing down, then the game goes back to normal. If you don't then start a controlling game, he then goes and falls off an edge. When he was running fast, all of the different things that could kill him no longer applied. He was completely protected. What about if I could find a variable in the game which made the game be like this all the time so I could get a really high score? Well, I can. And now I'll demonstrate this. Let's go back and have a new game. Now press the button to make him run a short distance at the start of the game. Now we'll wait for him to get to full speed. Once he's running full speed, there is a value in the RAM, which is the distance he's still got to run at full speed before slowing down. Let's see if we can find this value and make it a really big value so he just carries on running. Now to do this, go into Game Killer, but this time we do not know what this value is. It could be anything. There's no way of knowing the exact distance he's run right down to several decimal places. So, we just press search without entering in the value. This will set Game Killer into a special mode where it will search all values. This is a very clever mode and it's a very powerful feature. Now, when we press search, we are no longer looking for a simple 32-bit value because this value goes down to decimal places. And because it goes down to decimal places, this means this value is a float. A float is short for floating point operation, which rather than simply having 32 bits generating a number, which is limited, is limited up to 4 billion, a float can generate any number, either with a decimal place or either a massive great big value, because some of the bits set the decimal place's position while the other bits set the number. The downside of using a float is the number is not as accurate as having all 32 bits being used for what a value is. And also with a float you can't have a really big number with a decimal place, it's either a big number or a decimal place number. Anyway, now let's select float, so we're now searching for a float, and as we can see there's an awful lot of floats in this app. So now once we've done this, go back to the game, unpause it just for a moment, only very shortly, then immediately pause it again. Now we'll go back into Game Killer, press search again without entering the value because we don't know what a value is. Now this is a very clever feature of Game Killer. Search around for all values in the system, for all values which have decreased since last time. Now this is a very clever feature and you can see the number's gone down. This is only for values which it searched for before and it's now detected are less than what they were before. Now keep repeating these steps until the value has come down to enough value so we can actually see them on screen.
Now, what sort of value will it be? Well, think about the distance he has to run. It will be a fairly big number. And look at most of these floats. These floats are all really small numbers or are negative numbers. And this isn't going to be a negative number. And if we look through, there's only one number which fits this description. And here we are, we've now found it. I'm just over 900. This must be the value to set how far he's got to run until he slows down. Now, let's alter this value to a really, really big number. And now let's go back to the game. And let's see if he just keeps on running. And he's still running. He's still running. And he's still running. And I don't think he's going to slow down. I've done it. I've hacked a game so he never stops running in invincible mode. Now I'm going to get a really high score. And seven minutes later, alternatively, when a really high score, leave it for seven hours. And once you've had enough of this, simply go back into Game Killer, go back to value, and then set this value to one. This now means that he's now going to finish running. Once you've done this, go back to the game, and he slows down. And now he slows down, you can now start controlling him again. Look at this, I've got loads of coins, loads of gems, and an amazingly long distance that I've managed to run. Hacking games is far more fun than actually playing games, plus it is far more educational. As playing games is just mindlessly playing a game. Hacking games teaches you about binary concepts such as twos of complement, floats, integers. It is far more creative and educational than simply playing a game. If you want me to hack a particular game or anything come to that and want me to make a video about it, leave what you want me to hack in the comment section below. Coming up in the next episode of Let's Hack Something, I'll show you how to get onto the top of the leaderboard of most of the games on Miniclip.